welcome to my new home office. It may not look like much, but I have a plan. I'm calling it the Home Office Megapod. Along the side of our house, we have a carport that extends into an indoor-outdoor room. It's about 3.2 by 6.8 metres and needs a proper floor. These battens here are to keep the new floor off the concrete and allow for airflow when water gets underneath. On top of that, we'll sit this yellow tongue board. The floor itself will be bamboo, which is not a material I've worked with before, but I found it really easy to install. It looks and feels like finished timber floorboards with no sanding or painting required. It's really hard wearing, and I think it's a great sustainable timber alternative. The room itself is a multi-purpose room, so my design has to take in a few considerations. The design is a little bit too complicated for a cardboard model like I did in my garden bed video, so I thought I'd try some 3D modeling in SketchUp. If, like me, you've never used SketchUp but want to give it a go, I can highly recommend having a look at this tutorial. I only found it recently but learned a lot from the simple to follow yet in-depth instructions. Now I'm not a builder by trade but I grew up building stuff and I do know which end of the hammer to hit things with. That said, I don't have a workshop or all the right tools and I've never built anything quite like this. So why such an ambitious design? Well, this is the room's basic layout. Things to keep in mind are this sliding door and glass panel, which is a secondary entrance. So whatever's here is on show and it needs to be welcoming when you come through the door. At the other end, this sliding door is how we access our backyard. This is a multi-purpose room. It's used for music, working out or just hanging out. So I don't want to take up too much space. I've allocated two by 2.2 meters here. With limited space, I've gone for an alternating box design. The curve brings you into the room, with boxes on this side for plants and other items of visual interest. On the inside, the boxes are for more practical office things. This part is behind a wall, so how that looks is not so important. The rest is on show. Looking from above gives you the best view of the shape. My desk will go here, with space above for folders of paperwork, books, archives, and that sort of stuff that I only need to access every now and again. These boxes I've left open are for plants that can be seen from both the inside of the office and the outside. This little area here is for a set of drawers that I already have. Right now you're probably wondering how on earth is he going to make this thing? Well, basically it's just boxes that all stack together to form cupboards that join together to make the whole pod. The Megapod will be made out of 12mm marine ply. This was not my original choice. It was the only suitable plywood that was available. Because I don't have a workshop or a cutting bench, I'm getting the local timber supply to pre-cut everything. For the panels on the curve section, it's been recommended I use bendy ply. This is not something I've used before and there is none in stock at the moment, so I have to put my faith in the timber gods and hope that it comes through in time. Once I had all the timber cut, it was time to start assembling boxes. As I said, I don't have a workshop at my house, so it was a bit of a challenge to keep everything square. Now, if I had my time over, I would have got myself some of these. I did use these clamps. They're okay, but not perfect. Next, it was time to start building the curved cupboard. At this stage, there was nothing special about these curved shelves. The timber is just cut on a curve, but it did take a moment or two for me to work out the best way to assemble them. I popped them up on a couple of timber offcuts so I could get the clamps underneath and some assistance was needed to hold them in place until I could clamp them. The middle piece here is only for stability at the moment. I'm not actually fixing those in place just yet. As you can see, it was quite a bit trickier to make sure the curve boxes were lined up properly. As I learn more about woodworking, I'm sure I'll discover better tools and techniques for builds like this, but please don't ever let not having a workshop or the right tools stop you from building something.
With three and a half of the shelves built, I wanted to line them up and to test how they were going to come together and to see if we'd got the cutting list right, which we hadn't. The vertical pieces on the bottom box of the curve shelf was actually short by about 25 mil or an inch. Annoying, but thankfully not critical. Note to self for next time, double check all cuts prior to assembly. Still, it was great to see the Megapod coming to life. As you can see here, the boxes will stack together like this, creating a 24mm, just under an inch, shelf. At this end, I'll need to add an extra strip that runs all the way down, and in the middle of each shelf, I'll have a divider, creating two boxes out of each shelf. For the middle pieces, I actually need to glue two together, which is what I've been doing over here. I ended up using an absurd amount of clamps because they often wanted to slide apart like opposing magnets or open up along the gap. And I didn't want to use nails here because unlike the boxes where the nails would be hidden, there was nowhere to hide them here. With the newly and correctly cut vertical panels, I was able to reassemble the bottom curved shelf. This is not the configuration, the big one will actually be on the bottom, I just wanted to see how it looked in place. Next was the bottom of the return shelf, which is slightly different to all the others. It will sit at a 90 degree angle to the ones above and is designed to house an existing set of drawers. Once everything was together, this one was actually finished, so I gave it a good sand to be ready for staining. Next it was time for the centre dividing panels and the box faces or backs. Honestly I was a little bit nervous about this stage because this would reveal how well I'd done in keeping everything square. A little sanding was needed in places but it all seemed to be pretty close so it was time to glue them in. Once the central panel was in, I used the flat end panels to hold the central one in place until the glue dried. Then I could glue in the first end panel. Snug as a bug in a rug. One down, so many to go. This, the previous box, and the next one only have one back panel each. The opposing side will be left open to let the light through. I am only using two panels here to keep the central panel in place. Once it's fixed in place, then I can glue in the single back panel. This block will only have one large back panel that sits against the wall. The rest of the boxes, like these, will all have opposing back panels. Now it's time to start assembling the cupboard sections. Gravity did a lot of the work here, but I really wanted these pieces to feel like one when glued, so I made sure everything was perfectly aligned, then clamped and weighted everything in place. Man, it's had a 
satisfying to see it all coming together. Now, a few minor issues are starting to appear, like here. This panel should have been 1198, not 1194, which means I have a 4mm gap. Not a huge problem. I'm just going to glue in a 4mm strip and get a little creative how I hold this in place until it dries. The big panel is pushing down, but I do need an off cut to stop the little strip from sliding out of place. Once that's dry, the large panel can be glued in place. This shelf is all ready to be sanded and stained, but before I do that, I need to get the vertical panels in place on the curved cupboards. Marking up for this one was a little more complicated, but I got there in the end with a little help of a fabric tape measure and a fair bit of head scratching. For each box on the curved shelves, there are two dividing panels and three back panels, made up from the bendy ply I'd yet to get my hands on. All the bottom boxes for each shelf need a second panel so the bases would have that double thickness too. So that was the next step here. While that was drying, I could start sanding the finished shelves. This cupboard sits at the entrance to the Megapod, so this end needs a full length piece of ply like the bottom did, although this one will be on show so it needs to look really nice. Next, there were more curved shelves to assemble. Thankfully, I was getting better at it by now. And more sanding. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time working in this Megapod or walking around it, so it was really important to me that every part was really smooth to the touch. One coat down and you can really start to see how this is going to come together. But this was just one section of five and they all need three coats. A mate lent me this router. It's designed to evenly smooth edges on timber but creates possibly the most annoying sound in the world. Don't say I didn't warn you. You still have to sand in the corners because it can't get in there. It is a more even edge than you'd get using sandpaper, but is it really worth it? Honestly, I'm not really sure. There are some jobs where a router is going to be great, but for this, I don't know. Maybe it saved me an hour or two, but it did take a big chunk out of one piece when the bit broke. To stay in the office Megapod, I'm actually using some leftover floor coat from our renovation, and I want to use it up. As I said before, it was really important for this whole build to feel super smooth to the touch. So after each coat, I sanded it back with finer and finer sandpaper, and then just by hand on the last one. It was a lot of work, but whenever I touch the finished build, I'm so grateful for the effort I put in. This piece will sit on top of the cupboards, bridging the gap above my desk along the wall. <laughs> Once together, it too needed sanding and three coats. Before anything could be assembled, there were a few adjustments I had to make. And some final sanding and painting. Now this L-shaped piece is super heavy and to get it up on the top of my shelves, I was gonna need help and tool help at that. 
Luckily, with a bit of help from my six foot six neighbor Toby and his wife Mel wrangling the fan, we were able to get it into position. In case I ever need to pull the Megapod apart, I'm not going to glue these sections together. Instead, I'm using 20mm screws to hold everything in place. These screws will be visible, so I'm pre-drilling the holes to make sure the screws don't damage the timber, and I don't damage the screws as I drill them into place. I'm also drilling a mill or two down with this larger bit to countersink the screws so they sit nice and flush with the shelves. Be careful not to drill too deep with this one. <laughs> What you can do here is, well you can obviously use a manual screwdriver, but if you're too lazy for that, just grab your cordless drill and you can use it to just turn it a little bit and line it up so it's all square, if you're that way inclined. As the sections come together, there are a few areas which need additional panels, like here. These ones can be glued into place, but given this is the underside of a shelf and will sit directly above my desk, I decided to add a couple of additional screws just in case. The Mega Cube is going to sit flush with the wall, so I had to remove the skirting board here. I would trim that down later on and reinstall. These shelves are all really heavy, so I used strips of cardboard underneath to help me slide them around the floor more easily. My bendy ply still hadn't arrived, so I had to set up my desk temporarily in place. Not ideal, but needs must. So here it is, this is the bendy ply. It only bends in one direction, so make sure you get your cuts right. It's also lighter in colour than I wanted, but at this stage I was just keen to get the build finished. Now the backs of the boxes were relatively easy to install on the other shelves. The same cannot be said for the bendy ply. I tried to build a jig to hold them in place, but never got it working as well as I wanted. In the end, it was just painful perseverance that got me through. Possibly not my finest piece of carpentry work. The ones on the outside of the curve were much easier to hold in place because of the tension, but they still needed quite a bit of finessing to install. The bendy ply is much thinner than the marine ply, which caused a few issues with the nails. In the end I had to go for much smaller ones, but not before I'd made quite a mess. Thankfully nothing that couldn't be fixed up with a bit of filler. With these curved panels in place, it was time to assemble the final piece of the Megapod. How good does that look? Now I can start attaching everything together, which did include adding a couple of extra panels like this skinny one on the side here. Again I used screws to join the cupboards together. One thing I didn't film though is getting an electrician to come in and install power. With all of these connecting screws on show, I was really careful with my measurements to make sure they were all in the right position. Despite my best efforts, not all the gaps joined up as tightly as I wanted, so some filler was required here too. Forgetting all about my plan to use screws, I mistakenly glued this piece and the piece underneath in place before realising that that wasn't such a good idea. Luckily it wasn't too late and with a bit of clean up work I was able to fix the problem. And then 
this was the final piece to glue. While that dried, I could use screws for the removable piece, again pre-drilling everything first. Then some filling and a final sand before tidying up and getting ready for painting. From a crazy idea in SketchUp to a one-of-a-kind Megapod, I'm very happy with how this turned out. Yes, there are a few errors here and there, but they'll remind me that I've still got a lot to learn when it comes to building. From such an ambitious plan, I've got to say, it's a great space to work in and is everything I hoped it would be. After working in this space for over a year now, I still love it. I've added some additional shelving, but also want to build some extra drawer space into a couple of the cupboards. So I'll try and do a video about that soon. What did it cost and how long did it take? The timber cost just over two and a half thousand Australian dollars. Um, the electrics about 400 and I probably spent a couple of hundred on extra clamps and hardware. So just over 3000 Australian dollars in total. All up, it took about two months to build, but that did involve a lot of waiting for timber and recuts to arrive. And with all that waiting for glue to dry, I wasn't really tracking my work hours. Final thoughts? Well, you've heard enough from me, so I just want to say a big thanks to all the people that have been watching my videos lately, those who have subscribed and those who have left so many comments. It's a great motivation to do more videos like these and more gardening projects, so a big thanks to all of you.